If it doesn't work, I'll go tell it. I'll do another presentation. Yeah. So, so it's going to save it from, it's going to ensure privacy from the global passive or even global active attacker. They're not going to know which car is uh, in where. They're going to know which one. We're almost to the end. This is how the, 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 uh, the security works. Next week, I think, you're going to be studying this PKI, this, this public key infrastructure. And what, just, just to make a really simple, long, short, short story out of it, I know a lot of you guys don't know it yet, but basically the idea is if I have two keys, like a safety, it's like a safety deposit box. If, the, if, if I have a key and the bank has a key, both of us got to be there or we can't open the drawer. Right? So now, with this, with this public key infrastructure, if I send a message to you, I can give you one of the keys. Basically, I can give you one of the keys. Effectively, you, you can't have it, but you can use that key. If I, if I save the message with one key, it can be opened with the other key. So if you send me, and, and, and one key is public, and one key is private. Have you heard about this? Who's never heard about it before? Maybe you get to it. So, so the, the idea is, 300 mil, every 300 milliseconds or hundreds of times per second, if you're receiving them, you have to authenticate all of these messages using this PKI. That's a lot of processing and overhead. To cut, up, to cut down on that, they don't use 256-bit key lengths. The cool thing about these keys is the, the amount of security is directly related to the key length. The longer the key, the more security. It's that simple. So they're going to use a shorter one for this BSM because it's so long. Digital certificates are not linkable to a vehicle and they're only valid for five or ten minutes. So when you get your new car, they load you up with hundreds of thousands of keys. Can I ask a question? Yeah. The encryption for that digital signature algorithm, how fast is for that whole data need to be encrypted and encrypted? I mean, every one of those questions depends on the processing power of the vehicle and everything like that, but obviously it would, it's, it's theoretically possible or they wouldn't implement it this way. I don't know the right numbers. I need to know that, though. But yeah, how fast can you encrypt it and decrypt it? You, you, you're doing a lot of, lots of data. Well, one of the things that we study in, in bondnet privacy research... Because if you're going to use using RSA, RSA is also is going to take long. You know, well, I mean, they're using this... Like they're using, like like they're using ECDSA. Right. Exactly. You're right. If you, depending on which scheme you use, it has a huge difference. But this is this is the scheme that they have decided yeah. on. That one's pretty much rock, rock solid. It's just a question of how big the key the key is. But you know, if you have enough cars, if, if if you're at a rock concert and there's a stadium and you get out and everybody gets in their car and turns it on and all of a sudden all that stuff's going on, it's going to be nuts and everybody's going two miles an hour and they're all packed together. Be a lot of traffic congestion in there. So you said hundreds of thousands are loaded up, but how does the other side know which one it's using to decrypt? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, so so. Yeah, that's that's an, I mean that will be introduced for the okay. For leave this that, class. Leave that for, yeah, yeah, it will be introduced. Is, yeah, but it's basically related to the public key cryptography and key management. Yeah, yeah key management. Bottom line is you need two keys, and and your two keys are only valid for. Five or ten minutes. Wow. Yeah, not here. Public key cryptography algorithm and digital certificate. What is a digital certificate? How to generate? How to verify? And this will be introduced later, hopefully yeah, next th time. This is a real world kind of example. So when you're when you're learning all the theoretical stuff, and you're saying, why do I need to learn this? This is why. This is the most important thing in information security. The most robust is 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 encryption and, and uh, certificate management and key management. My assumption is that the decryption will be in the application layer. I'm wrong. Every layer. Yeah, it's, Good it's, point. In, it's in there. It's yeah. in the Every layer. layer. Every layer. Mm -hmm. well, well, it's, encrypted. it's encrypted across the network. It depends. For this example, is can could you please go back? To the purple ESM. Thing? Yeah, where's BSM? Oh, the BSM, sure. Which layer? I mean, BSM is in the, the, the... I believe. Here. It's you can see there are two types of applications supported by Wendy, right? One is 
safety application, for example, yeah, that's one is non-safety application. For safety, exam, uh, safety application, it could be related to the brake and traffic light, something like that. For non-safety application, it could be, for example, where's the gas station around and online shopping, whatever, right? And the DSM belongs to here. Yes, you're right. It's the application. In the application. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is, but in the future, not in the future, are they? I think I will introduce cryptography, and I also introduce what kind of security services can we achieve with cryptography. Then we will say, are the five layers, I will use the five layer protocols, I think, physical layer and data link layer. Five layer protocols, we will say which layer is cryptography. The answer is each, I mean, not the physical layer. Link layer, IP layer, transform layer, application, each layer is Cryptography. Yeah, I mean, for to achieve the security services, authentication, competition, IP integrity. Yeah, very good question. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Now, well, I won't go into all this. We're getting late on time, and I know that. Uh, Okay, so take your break, time. I need it's a break, already. man. I don't want to hold you up. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So this certificate will be introduced later. Yeah, we'll introduce yeah. later. The idea is, yeah. though, that the certificate has tells you what you can do. So be And both. also hash will be introduced. We will start it thoroughly. You will be the expert of this later. So, so now, now we've covered the, the, the nutshell. I think you understand what's going on across the network and what the security stuff is. That's the important thing. Now we, you understand how a vehicle ad hoc, vehicular ad hoc network works. You now know that. Now let's think about how can people attack it. I have one that I call Crying Wolf. There's a story, Peter and the Wolf. Anybody know the story, Peter and the Wolf? Everybody knows? No. I don't know. It's a, I think it's a Russian, Russian story. Yeah, it is a Russian story. Yeah, the Yeah, same thing. They probably have it in every country, right? But yeah, it's, it's definitely a, it's Peter and the Wolf. Probably go to India as a tiger. But anyway, so uh, anyway, the, the Peter and the Wolf story is this guy goes, he's just playing pranks on people in his town, and he goes, hey, everybody, there's a wolf, and they all run around, and he goes, oh, there's no wolf, ha, 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 he laughs at him. And the second time, he does the same thing, there's a wolf, ha, 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 the third time, there really is a wolf, and there's no, forget it, and he gets eaten by the wolf. Okay? So, so the idea here in the attack is crying wolf. You deliberately cry wolf. You might also call it parody. So basically... If you're driving in your car, you're an attacker, okay? And you have this, this, this recorder. And all it does is it records all the broadcast messages that are being sent. All those basic safety messages, it just records them. Okay? And then, it just, like a machine gun, just starts, starts uh, sending out everybody else's safety message, not yours. Okay? You send out your legitimate one. So now you're, 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 you're sending out, remember, an exact, even though it's encrypted, it's encrypted. So you don't know what the heck the message is. But, but the message is, like for example, I'm going 30 meters per second and I'm going due north, right? And I'm right here. And then I send it again and again and again. Something's wrong. How could I, how could I go you know, 30 meters per second and a second later I'm still in the same spot, going the same thing? What am I, a treadmill? <laughs> you know, what's going on? How is that possible? What's going to happen is all of the onboard units, meaning the, 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 the receivers that are in the cars, and all of the roadside units, the RSUs, they're all going to say, something's wrong with this guy. That can be avoided by having a timestamp of the message. Put the timestamp on there. Yeah, but you're sending the same message. It doesn't matter because it's at the past. It's in the past time. So you, so you go ahead and, and accept it? Very as, good. Yeah. I'm just saying it's a, yeah. it's a workaround. Yeah, it, it, that, would, that would definitely work. But, so, but, but yeah, who knows? So you, if, you have, if you were able to do this, then you could invalidate other people's certificates. Yes, it becomes it's, a DOS attack, right? It becomes, it's a, like a replay attack, really, because you're not really overwhelming the system. You're right. causing it to revoke it. Now, there may be a, work, a workaround to this pure parrot thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some way knowing the structure of the message to mess with it. Maybe there isn't. I like your idea. Let's remember to write that down. Timestamp. There is a timestamp on there. So you're going to ignore all the parrots. But 
Who knows? If you receive a message from somebody, you Ta might... Timestamp is going to be hard, though, because yeah. the time has to be synced. Has to be synced across there's, the There's day. issues. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's I'm pretty sure it can be done. It's got to be synced. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of things that could go wrong with this. It hasn't been implemented yet, so... Right. But assuming that there was some way to replay a tag that would, that, or, or, to, or to cause them to revoke the, uh, the, the certificate, then theoretically, you could, if you could cause other people, maybe you could just say, maybe you just report, this guy had a bad, he, he was a bad guy. Right? Could be that simple. If, 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 let's suppose somebody detects a bad guy, how do they let the rest of the people know? The problem with different MAC addresses, though, the, the, what you're saying, the, it's a big issue because nobody is going to be, uh, they can't track anybody. So if, if you can change your MAC address every second and you're sending these messages, there's no way for them to say that all these fake mes messages came from you because you have a different MAC address. You see what I'm saying? Well, the certificate authority can. That is a MAC if, if, if I recorded it and I said, hey, this happened, I, I mean, I, I, I might not know, but I might be able to go to the certificate authority and say, hey, this guy did something bad. And certificate authority, Based on I, what? I know who that is. They're the ones who issued all the keys. Based on the key then, not sure. on the MAC address. Well, Based on your public key. It's a fake MAC address that's also granted, you know. It's the, it, the, all the links, all the bindings are granted by this. But what's the point of a fake MAC address if, you have, if your key can be tracked? It's not the... It's not the, the real yeah, anything you it's use the real for a long time. Address. I mean, you're right. He's right. Yeah, anything, for example, everybody has more than one ID, right? Mm -hmm. right. Like your J number, your social security number, your driver's license, right? Yeah, same here for the vehicle. Vehicle has the MAC address, fake or real, temporary or permanent, and zero certificate. Anything that is used long enough you could be tracked or yeah. could do something bad or be on track. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, so what's the question? What's the question? The temporaries already exist. The Tracking. Yeah. Can they really track you if they want to? It seems like they can based on the on the key, not on the MAC address. the key changes also every five minutes. The, the certificate authority, we have to assume a trusted third party for this. We have to. And they have to know, be able to know where we are. We have to trust that they're not going to track us. And I think the root, the root authority is the U.S. Department of Transportation. So to the extent we trust them. Okay. Have you ever seen one of those? Uh, there's a video, great video on YouTube about how they protect, um, how they protect these these uh, third parties. Like there might be 11 people. You need six of them to be able to enter the room. I mean, <laughs> it's really crazy how they set that up. But. Anyway, so you have to trust there is that one central authority. That one should be able to check all the keys, all the transmissions, right? Any validations that are going on, that, that one should be able to do it. I was just trying to understand why they're changing the MAC address. And do you, is there a real, a real reason for that then? I mean, that, yeah, they yeah, say, they, I they think this give is, I think, I mean, he, Richard is asking a question why they changed the MAC address, right? Yeah. So, well, George is talking about another kind of attack. Okay. How about you go back yeah. to, yeah, they, right. cost, they changed the MAC address because of location privacy. If one vehicle use the permanent MAC address, right. it's easily for others to, uh, I mean, to check your location, correct? Okay. So that's why they change the MAC address frequently. Okay. Well, George is talking about another kind of attack. Could you go back to the crime wall? Yeah. So, sorry, George. No, yeah, no, no problem. Been, uh, yeah. These are the two different types of attacks. Okay. This is related to the location privacy. Right. MAC address. Right. Well, this one is related, I think, yeah. This is another kind of attack. To the source. So if the attacker repeatedly replay all the messages, the result or the consequence would be with the existing security standards, the, I mean, o, OBU, onboard utility, okay. and RSU real sets facility, we will cancel all the certificates right. that are contained in the messages above. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that will cause, say, the valid users, they cannot use their valid certificates. But the bad guy, cause he does not 
replay his own message. He can still use his own certificate. Mm -hmm. He get higher priority than other vehicles. Mm -hmm. Right? Worry, so this to... is a second type of attack. Actually, your, your example, I think, is even better, though. But, uh, yeah, if, if, if a person could cause everybody else to revoke that certificate, then your then yours would be valid. There's what you feel and also, true. Roger just mentioned, say, if every vehicle or every message contains the timestamp, that's a good idea. So when the bad guy replay, because the timestamp is within the message, I mean, the good guys will figure out this message is not trustful. They will not take any action, right? That's a good idea. But later on, in our course, we, we have some similar techniques to solve this problem. You can almost use, you know how they revoke all the certificates except for the one who's actually broadcasting? I mean, they can, they can realize that he is actually the bad guy by sure. having this. There's, there's a lot of ways, well, it, it's, it, it's a cat and mouse game in any kind of a security situation. I think they can make contribution to your work. Yeah, I, definitely. <laughs> That's well, what I'm trying to do. With so, actually, with this topic, invited talk given by Josh, we'd like to I mean, attract more students yeah. to work on this area. It's an interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say something? Like, for the MAC address, can I can really understand the change because the social security right now, yeah. if someone yeah. really yeah. did uh, I mean, identity theft, the you cannot rid of your social security. It always there. So it's if you have it very well, you right. can right. switch so they cannot use it. That's a, yeah, the that's idea. Why, that's what the idea is. It's a good, good idea. idea. Then only the centralized source knows who Just make it more complicated. Yeah. 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 We'd all be safer if you just kind of work. Make it harder to stress. You did for all your work. Well, it takes a lot. My brother has everything to get into the social security. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
how, what's the chances that you have to collide with another Cadillac? Maybe. I don't know. I guess it's some positive probability. Anyway, so yeah, I, I'm definitely, uh, I want to I wanna write stuff about this. I want to publish stuff about this. And I'm interested in threats, things, ideas you might think about how somebody might attack this, and if you have any solutions to an attack. But privacy is a big open issue. How do we make sure that that's private? Nobody can be tracked. Are there alternate protocols you're looking at? There's, everybody's coming up with new ones. Who knows which one they'll decide on. Right now it looks like that they'll just give everybody 100,000 keys and every five minutes change them. Seems like, a, seems like there must be a better way than that though. Doesn't this seem like a lot of work? Yeah. But that's the best idea we've had so far. This, this guy that wrote this paper, yeah. all this is based on this paper, a guy named uh, John Kenny. They invited him to write the paper. He didn't, he didn't, he said, please, will you write this paper because you know everything about these standards. He says, okay, I'll write it. He tells him. And he says in there, open issues, open issues, don't know, don't know. Yeah. This is so what we're doing this now. This paper is, <laughs> this is available paper. on Moodle if you check the course project. At the end, of, yeah, I already posted. Oh, you did, uh, in the folder of course project, there are two more documents uh, available. One is about the standards related to the talk given by Josh. Another paper is about the privacy issues of Vanity, and that's a research paper. We do a good survey about privacy issues, yeah. right? Yeah. And also propose a solution. It's an example. Yeah, it's not, a although it's not good, but yeah. Those the background the section papers. gives a good overview of the different privacy models that there are. Yeah. I was going to use this for IP What's packets. this? <laughs> These are my IP packets. <laughs> Throw them across the network, the wireless network. <laughs> but I didn't need them today. Sometimes I use them for presentations. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Oh, but most of you say Neville has interest to work on this topic. Hey, so if you want to publish something on it. Yeah, you can publish something. We, I'm going to do some network simulations using NS2, like Monday. I, I'm going to try to learn this in 20 days so I can do something meaningful by the end of the month. Oh, let's take a brief break. We can have a free discussion, talk with each other. Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't think we'll be able to use it because it didn't get started. Okay. Good job.